Hey everybody, thanks for joining today's NTOP Live about easy modifications to osteo integrated lattices using custom blocks. My name is Christopher Cho, Senior Application Engineer and Medical Device Guy at Entopology, and today's session is one of a few NTOP Lives that dive deeper into leveraging a collection of custom blocks meant specifically for generating osseo integrative structures. Uh, for those of you not too familiar with custom blocks, a good way to think about them is to consider them as compartmentalized and compact versions of a set of blocks. Custom blocks have a variety of functionalities, but one of their most common uses is to take a handful of complex or non-intuitive blocks and combine them in such a way so that all the complexity is hidden and only what is important becomes available to the user. The biggest benefit this provides is the ability to take a really long or complicated workflow that would normally use a lot of blocks and condense it down to just one or two. The download link below will give you access to a collection of over 40 custom blocks designed specifically for generating and analyzing osseo integrative structures. I've taken the extensive design workflow starting from CAD part and ending with mesh export and segmented the design process into a handful of blocks that can be easily implemented in a modular way, giving you the freedom to use only what you feel is necessary for your design workflow. Today's focus is on the lattice structure modification aspect of this osseo integrative structures toolkit. And to be specific, the blocks we're looking at will impact lattice graphs specifically. Now, Entopology represents lattices geometrically in a variety of ways, and lattice graphs are a way to represent them as simply a set of nodes or beams prior to applying an actual thickness to the lattice structure itself. So the primary focus today is going to be on these lattice graphs. All right, so what I have here is a really generic donut shape. Uh, that I filled with a randomized lattice using one of the blocks in the Osseo Integrative Structures Toolkit. Using this, I'm actually able to call out a target pore size, a beam thickness, and a randomization seed value to keep this lattice unique. What is also built into this workflow are considerations for different types of geometries that you may want to populate with a lattice, as well as the boundary conditions around the edges that keep things uniform from center of geometry to the fringe end. If you are interested in knowing more about how this specific block works, feel free to open it up and take a peek inside. But with a few other custom blocks, I can show off some of the modifications that a user might be interested in applying to a lattice structure after it has been created. The first one here is actually remove open beams. Now this one is really cut and dry. If I drop in a lattice graph as an input, what this actually does is that it, it removes every single exposed beam in the lattice. So if you are an orthopedic device designer, and there is some concern within your organization that open lattice beams may snap off during abrasion testing or even break off inside the body. This is a really easy way to remove that concern entirely by digitally ensuring that there is no lattice beam jutting out on its own. In the case where a user wants to be more selective, there is a custom block available called Remove Selected Beams. With this block, a user can use another implicit body as a selection region to designate which beams they would like to remove. Although this may appear to be a trim, keep in mind that this works a little bit differently than a trim in that it will not trim or truncate a beam, but rather if any part of the beam falls within the selection region, the entire beam will be removed. Next up, we have a trimmed lattice beams block. And this custom block actually does truncate the beam up until the boundary of the selected region. So using the same cylinder, any beam that is impacted by this block will be shortened, but not entirely removed. What also should be noted is that this selection region works more like an intersected region, not a subtracted region. This means that for the implicit body used, in the case of this cylinder here, the lattice inside the implicit body is what will be retained, and what is outside is going to be what is removed. Now this custom block was put together this way because more often than not, medical device designers are trying to ensure that their lattice beams do not escape or exceed a certain lattice design region. And more often than not, they already have the solid bodies available to perform this type of trimming operation. Next in line, we actually have extend open beams. With this custom block, we can take a desired lattice graph like the one we have just trimmed 
and extend the newly opened beams by a desired distance. If the user is looking to have all open beams be extended by a uniform value, then entering a scalar value will work just fine. If the user is looking to control the extension distance with a field or a non-uniform value, we can see that this input actually accepts fields as well, so something like a ramp lock will also work just fine. However, keep in mind that the beams selected for extension are those that fall within the implicit body used as the selection region. Typically, if you are trimming and then extending, just like what we did here with this cylinder, using the same cylinder will be sufficient as a selection region when trying to grab those outer beams. Lastly, we have a lattice structure that has been more aggressively trimmed, leaving not just open beams, but also floating ones, ones that we can see over here and down here. Now these are disconnected from the rest of the lattice structure entirely and in the case where we want to remove these floating beams we have a custom block here called remove floating beams that accepts a lattice graph input. Much like the remove open beams custom block this remove floating beams simply checks the entire lattice graph for beams that are not connected to anything on either side. So for these two beams down here, they are removed as a result of this block because not only are they floating relative to the main lattice structure, they are actually disconnected relative to each other. However, it is important to note that if these two beams were connected to each other, they would not be considered floating and would not be removed using this block. In this circumstance, removing these two floaters would require a slightly different approach, perhaps using remove open beams again, or perhaps more manually using the remove selected beams block. If you are an experienced end topology user, you may have already come across a handful of these native blocks that offer functionality very similar to what we have discussed today. In many cases, they do function the same way and give very similar results. But the intent behind these custom blocks is to make it even easier for new users to get on board with using end topology to create osseo integrative structures. As always, any of these custom blocks can be opened up and explored so that a stronger understanding of what is happening can be attained. Perhaps with this knowledge and baseline functionality, an even more unique solution can be developed specifically for your design and your organization. From design to output, end topology offers not just a variety of ways to control aspects of your osseo integrative lattice design process, but also a variety of ways to control where and how that design process can be applied. Obviously, what I've shown here today is not intended as a be-all, end-all solution when it comes to designing or modifying your osseo integrative lattices for your medical devices. There are many ways to go about this within end topology, and this is merely an example on how to use our pre-existing osseo integrative structures toolkit to hit the ground running with end topology.